Today we're going to talk about separating mixtures. Most all matter actually naturally occurs in the form of mixtures. So it's important for us to learn about the processes that we use to separate them. We can separate mixtures based on their physical properties and we're going to study eight different ways to separate mixtures. You're going to want to pay attention because at the end of this presentation you're going to use the techniques that you've learned to separate a mixture that I give you in the lab. The first type is by eye. Obviously in this mixture of snack mix you can separate the colored M&Ms and nuts and other snack food visually. The second most common separation technique is filtration. As you can see from the coffee that you your parents might drink or the filter that's in your car, you can separate solids and liquids through filtration. Here you'll see in the lab a ring stand set up with a beaker pouring a solution of um, a solid and a liquid through filter paper and separating the liquid into the beaker below and catching the solid in the filter paper. Distillation is a, another technique of separating a mixture with two liquids that might have different boiling points. You add heat and capture one liquid in the beaker after it goes through a cooling device called a condenser. Here are two different versions of commercial distillation stills. Crystallization, which you might have seen from um, like rock candy, is a way of separating um, a sugar solution. Here we heat a beaker and the water evaporates or the solvent evaporates, leaving the solid crystals. Here are some beautiful crystallization examples. Magnetic separation is something very handy. Say you had a mixture of sand and iron filings. The iron could be pulled out from a magnet and separated. Sublimation, we're going to learn later in the year, is when a solid passes through the liquid state and goes straight to a gas. And here's a collection device that you can see for using sublimation to separate. You, you would use this to separate two solids when sub, one sublimates and the other does not. Chromatography is a very pretty way to separate two liquids by the rate at which the liquids pass along a piece of paper or paper towel. They travel at different rates and you can actually see the separation through color. A centrifuge you may have uh, seen used at a hospital is often used to separate blood. It uses the principle that um, in mixtures some things are heavier than others and by spinning them around the heavier substances go to the bottom and the lighter to the top. Alright, so now it's going to be your turn to separate a mixture in the lab and you'll see that this is very important uh, for both research and for industry. So use the information that you've just learned about separating mixtures and design a procedure to separate a mixture of sand, salt, poppy seeds, styrofoam balls, and iron filings. You're going to obtain a sample, examine it carefully, Place a small amount aside so that we know what the original mixture was. And then you're going to use the materials in the lab to implement a way to separate and recover all five components. One helpful hint is that if you're going to use water, please be sure to not use too much because odds are you're going to need to evaporate the water to recover the five solids. As each component is separated off, please place it in a small plastic sack, baggie, or a um, other device that I will give you. Make sure you keep careful notes, and you're going to be writing this up um, as a lab that will include your purpose, your materials that you used, your procedure, and your conclusions.
So good luck to you and have fun.